5.0. This is the second day of Ignatian lecture series 5.0 held consecutively for the fifth time by NSA. I welcome our speaker of the day, Dr. Shridhar, and all the participants to be a part of today's event. All the participants are requested to switch off their mic and unmute only in the Q&A session. I now request Dr. Viola Ma'am, Assistant Professor of Zoology Department, to give a prelude over today's topic. Over to you, Ma'am. Thank you very much. Abiotic factors are universal determinants of biodiversity. While a lot is talked on the effect of climate change on human health, less is said of plant health on which depends the existence of all living things on Earth. Crops are weather sensitive and appear less hardy to withstand the vagaries of climate change. This sensitivity of plants and the responsiveness of the foraging insects together shows its effects on the insect population foraging activity and diversity. Insects are poikilotherms or cold blooded animals, which implies that their body temperature is approximately the same as that of the environment. And temperature probably is the single most important environmental factor that could influence insect behavior. Organisms are influ influenced physiologically and behaviorally by abiotic factors. And this in turn, may influence the outcome of community organizations on the whole. Climate change affects animals, especially insects, in many ways. It can cause a shift in geographical spread, abundance, or diversity. It can also change the location, timing, and the magnitude of the outbreak of pests. It can define the phenological and the genetic properties of the species. It is therefore very important to identify the vulnerability of life to climate driven changes. Dr. Sridhar here will enlighten us more over the same topic. Over to you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sridhar, one small introduction. In continuation oh. with what uh, Dr. Viola said, a brief okay. intro to uh, the profile of Dr. V. Sridhar. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce the scientist with whom I worked almost four years in a project on the National Initiative on Climate Resilient Agriculture. Like climate change, the name of this project also went on changing. Uh, it was a privilege working with Dr. Shida. Presently, sir, is principal scientist in the Division of Crop Protection, Indian Institute of Horticulture Research, Hesregatta, Bangalore, Bengaluru. Uh, sir is an entomologist uh, specialized in insecticide resistance, uh, climate change impact of pests, and other avenues in entomology. Uh, sir has also won in many recognitions. He's a very friendly person, easy to approach, cordial, down to earth. That's the experience that I gained uh, working with Dr. V. Sridhar during my tenure, my, my stay there in IHR as the research associate. Sir has also won uh, many recognitions. The IARI Fellowship for doing PhD during 1992-96, the Fellow of Entomological Society of India, uh, DST Fast Track Fellowship for Young Scientist. Sir is also Fellow of Association for Advancement of Pest Management in Horticulture Ecosystems. Uh, he is also the associate editor and joint secretary of APME, which is the Association for Advancement of Pest Management in Horticulture Ecosystems. So uh, uh, it was good time learning. I got to learn many things. Uh, sir is well versed in this field on uh, uh, mitigatory measures using softwares like Climax. Thank you, sir, uh, for all your guidance during my stay there. Thank you for accepting our invitation to be our speaker for the Ignatian Lecture Series. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jay Shankar, <coughs> Dr. Vella, Madam, for giving brief introduction about the topic also. Now, uh, both of you made my job easy uh, for to proceed further. Uh, thank you so much for giving, giving me a chance for sharing whatever I learned. Uh, through that project of NICRA, where uh, Dr. Jayashankar is also a part of that in the initial years, we learned together actually. Uh, now we'll go to uh, directly to this topic. 
Hello. Sir, yes, sir. The screen sharing is. To yes, be done. Sir, I have made you uh, the guest. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am going. Uh, is it visible? First slide. Yes, sir. Okay. So if you put it on slideshow mode, it will be full screen. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is in slideshow mode. Uh, for us, it is uh, not uh, showing the full screen. Screen. Yes. Huh? Yes. What I'm uh, there is a slideshow option on top, sir. Uh, slideshow. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Any change? Same. Uh, we are waiting for it, sir. You click the right uh, thing actually. From it should now turn on. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it takes time. Uh, will you try clicking again, sir, on the beginning? Okay, okay. From, from beginning. Yes. Huh? From beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is uh, rotating. Any change or same thing? For me, it's still looking that uh, same yeah. old. Again, can I go and start sharing? Completely? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Share the desktop and then come back. Yeah. Yeah, that's that would that be. Yes. Yes. Mm. Interesting. And the shankar, any? Uh, your uh, screen is shared, sir. You have to go to the folder. Uh, and yeah, then, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Is it okay? Yes, sir. It's on the full screen mode. Yeah. No, it's full screen. Okay. I know. Yes. Uh, Yeah, well, once again, good evening and welcome you all. Sorry for this small uh, delay. Uh, you know, the, this thing. Now we'll uh, go ahead with the title, Coping with Climate Change, Agriculture Perspective. All of you as uh, bio biology students, those even those who are working with the also, 
now you may be very clear that what is uh, climate change and uh, whether it is uh, already accepted or not uh, actually till a few years back it is a matter of discussion climate change is happening some is to agree that climate change is happening some is to argue that there is climate change it is a natural phenomena uh, it's always like this but as the understanding about climate change or uh, and uh, human mediated interventions made us to realize as yes, climate is changing now it is a reality how it is that even though you might have listened uh, the introduction about climate change i will uh, take few slides to explain about uh, climate change perspective for understanding a uh, global climate change if you take that term into consideration uh, it refers to a significant long term identifiable changes in the climate of earth as a whole that last for ex extended period uh, generally for all climate change related things uh, 30 years average is considered as a reasonably good uh, period to assess uh, either it as a historic data or the in the futuristic perspective uh, for 30 years is considered as a uh, one uh, period for climate change uh, studies purpose coming to the global climate change what are the major causes responsible if you see the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide fluorinated gases and uh, in nature we have uh, volcanic eruptions naturally what happens and burning of the fossil fuels what we are doing and the deforestation it is once again man made and uh, solar irradiation which is coming from sun which is not uh, totally reflected back all these factors are resulting into global climate change why this greenhouse gases uh, uh, all of you may be knowing because this particular phenomena was uh, initially it was observed in greenhouses where plants are grown covered structures that's why it is known as the greenhouse gases this is again on uh, global warming uh, a definition type it is the slow increase in the average temperature of the earth's atmosphere because an increased amount of the energy that is heat striking the earth from the sun is being trapped in the atmosphere and not radiated out into the space that is how it is a global warming what we are feeling uh, and uh, different components which are contributing this climate change if you see because of this greenhouse uh, effect uh, physical drivers of climate change includes uh, gases like carbon dioxide Uh, methane methane is uh, one of the gas which is emanating from mainly from the agricultural field halogens nitrous oxide other gases and there are few factors which will be negating the increase in the uh, uh, temperature in the atmosphere like aerosols aerosol cloud influences and ultimately what is the factor which is mainly resulting uh, in the rise in temperature in the atmosphere is radiative forcing which is expressed as watts per square meter it is the unit which is measured uh, to even for futuristic estimation of climate change impact in terms of rise in temperatures this is uh, this is the unit used uh, watts per square meters we will see what is its uh, relevance in climate change research and not only this is simple rise in the temperature even the climate change also includes extreme events like change in rainfall pattern drought uh, etc this is what last year if you see there is a lot of change in the rainfall pattern in if you take agriculture into consideration uh, indian agriculture is a gamble with monsoon that is the notion generally will have and the monsoon will decide the major uh, 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 it is a major factor which will decide the production of agriculture in the larger uh, area and uh, world over what is the organization which is guiding us or uh, uh, which will give the understanding about the climate change over the period what is happening what is expected in future it is through the intergovernmental panel on climate change uh, located in switzerland uh, this ipcc it it gives the different uh, scenarios for the future till 2100 and it is a group of uh, laboratories from different countries which are members of this ipcc we are also a member of india as a member of this ipcc and they will be giving the futuristic scenarios in all the 
uh, climate change related studies whatever may be the project we are uh, working in uh, throughout the world ipcc will be the basis of basis which will give some idea about what is going to uh, uh, this globe in the coming uh, 50 years or 100 years and they will be coming out with special reports uh, at at the an interval of 7 or 8 years uh, special reports uh, and assessment reports they will come every 7 to 8 years uh, latest one assessment report 6 is expected to come in uh, 2022 Uh, as per the uh, latest uh, special report uh, which was released in 2018 impacts of global warming of 1.5 degree celsius above pre industrial level is uh, uh, expected uh, and uh, which will uh, impact the sustainable development and the efforts to uh, eradicate poverty uh, what are the measures we can take up all those suggestions will be uh, given in the special report of ipcc coming to the assessment report of four it is earlier uh, uh, it was the earlier version when dr uh, jay shankar was working with us in ihr at that time we used to work with assessment report four scenarios these are the different scenarios a1 scenario b1 scenario if you uh, if uh, any one of you have seen uh, any papers on climate change you may have seen some scenarios a1 scenario b1 scenario a2 scenario b2 scenario how these uh, scenarios were built is in the years to come whether uh, taking into consideration globalization and the more economic focus that is a1 globalization and more environmental focus environmental focus means if some governments are uh, taking some measures to stop the uh, greenhouse gas em emissions in that conditions what happens and uh, in that way these uh, different scenarios will be created and in those scenarios what will be the projected temperatures in future suppose some environmental focus means the temperature can be restricted to 1 to 2.9 degrees celsius suppose only economic economics is the criteria environment is not being given any importance means the temperature may go up to 6.4 degrees this is how the scenarios will be uh, understood and studied and accordingly Uh, its impact on different uh, uh, fields whether it is agriculture or uh, uh, coastal climates or forestry or whatever may be the different uh, fields affected this will be the basis of uh, impact studies impact of climate change now uh, as per the latest uh, uh, scenarios you might have seen uh, the, the earlier ones are no more relevant now now all are represented to concentration pathways ipcc has come out with recently represented to concentration pathways uh, that means these scenarios are what we have seen earlier similarly the present scenarios projected are uh, rcp 2.6 rcp 4.5 rcp 6 uh, rcp 8.5 what does it indicate it indicates the the ra radiation forces of 2.6 per uh, what i was uh, telling earlier uh, watts per square meter if that is the uh, that is the energy being trapped or reflected from the earth uh, that, that indicates the that scenario suppose take for example rcp 2.6 rcp 2.6 means in 2046 to uh, 65 uh, mean likely range may, mean is 1 degree ranging from 0.4 to 1.6 uh, in the same scenario in 2081 to 2100 uh, the average of 0.3 to 1.7 again it is 1 degree means rcp 2.6 scenario is relatively better it will it, it won't uh, result in the uh, maximum rise in the temperatures this is the conservative scenario suppose from this scenario if we go to the extreme case of uh, uh, 8.5 watts per square meter if that is the uh, that is the energy what we have seen radiative forcing what i was showing here this radiative forcing if it goes to uh, 8 and above what is the temperature uh, expected is 8.5 means 1.4 to 2.6 Two degrees Celsius by 2046 to 65, or it may go even up to 3.7 degrees uh, Celsius, ranging from 2.6 to 4.8. This is how we have to understand the scenarios because 
uh, when you read being a science, uh, research science researchers or students when you uh, see any research paper on climate change uh, if you understand this what is this scenario uh, interpretation will be easy uh, in the finally across all uh, uh, representative concentration pathways are different scenarios mean temperature is projected projected to rise by 0.3 to 4.8 uh, degrees uh, by the late 21st century means by 2100 this is the expected and over uh, over the period ipcc reports if you see as we as more understanding is happening the causes of climate change as well as the uh, uh, its uh, management to mitigate or adapt uh, this uh, climate change understanding about those uh, things uh, the temperature uh, rise in temperature uh, is coming down because different now it is a, being a reality almost all the countries who are recognizing the recognizing the impact and the importance of uh, climate change what are the measures you have to follow uh, it, uh, they are being incorporated in these scenarios and the realistic picture is coming down okay by this 2100 uh, at the most the temperature may go up to 3 earlier it is हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल कैन यू ऑल हियर डॉक्टर श्रीधर नो सर सर नो सर आई बिलीव सर इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग द सम नेटवर्क लैग ऑन हिज साइड आई हैव जस्ट कम्युनिकेटेड टू हिम ही विल बी बैक Uh, participants have communicated to dr shridhar sir will join us any time now sorry for this inconvenience went on the chat look hello yes sir yes we have got yeah, where is the problem actually where is the problem that side or this side uh i believe from your i and i don't this know side. some uh, now we can't uh, predict with all this webinars these are expected yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yes. if it is uh, no we can okay this is yeah. this is a different climate change we are in two different <laughs> technological changes yeah. we can predict yeah. i will guess you and uh, just uh, give me a hint where it uh, means which slide the uh, yes the, yeah. the slide on all the greenhouse gases you were uh, running through that um, yeah that's good is it visible 
Yes, sir. The slides are visible, but uh, you have to yes. go to the slide. Yeah, yeah. Which slide? Yes. Which slide? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the next one. Uh, come down. Sir. The scenarios and the next. You all. You got this it. Is, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Then, yes, sir. You were talking about this. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Asset is okay. Uh, I'll continue. Yeah, because uh, if uh, I don't know where exactly I stop. Again, I will repeat. Uh, this is the understanding about this uh, climate change scenarios as per IPCC uh, is representative to concentration pathways. Uh, RCP 2.6, 4.5, 6 and 8.5. This has come in in the place of the A1, A2, B1. Uh, in the, in those places, uh, they are the revised and uh, updated uh, scenarios uh, for climate change for the near future as well as the by the end of the. Uh, to, uh, 2100. Uh, if you see this one uh, conservatively, uh, it the best uh, uh, measures, mitigation measures, RCP 2.6 means uh, temperature increase uh, will be restricted to one degree Celsius. Whereas in extreme case, RCP 8.5 says the temperature can uh, average temperature may increase by two to 3.7 degrees, 2.7 degrees Celsius by the End of uh, you know, 21st century. Coming to the evidence of climate change, if you see atmospheric CO2 levels and global temperature, this is uh, I, I was telling. If you take the CO2 level, if you measure in your campus or anywhere in uh, Bangalore, it will be minimum 400 ppm. Uh, earlier in all our books, we used to read around 330 ppm. Now CO2 levels have increased, and when you are doing some of the experiments uh, under climate change. Now what we are uh, doing is in the starting maybe 10 to 15 years back, uh, thinking that the CO2 levels may reach 700 ppm, 800 ppm. Experiments used to be set up at uh, uh, elevated uh, CO2 of uh, 600, 700, 800. But uh, now, uh, in, as per the realistic pictures, all the experiments uh, with elevated CO2 are generally restricted to around 550 ppm. That is what we are doing. Uh, then. Other uh, evidences are melting glaciers, rising sea level, expanse of ice, worsening droughts, increasing tornadoes, fossil record, and uh, distribution of species. In case of distribution of species, we will see one or two examples of how the species distribution, how they react to the climate change. Uh, for example, insects, as it was uh, mentioned in in the introduction, insects uh, are cold-blooded uh, animals. That's why the external temperature decides the uh, their development, whether they are, they can develop faster or slower. Because temperature is the most important factor in the development of insects. It has a direct relation with the uh, their development. This is the, the uh, slide which shows the same thing. What we discussed in uh, climate change, what will happen? This particular one is uh, available in uh, in uh, different uh, books. We we need not to. See individually. Now uh, we'll see climate change impact on agriculture exclusively for agriculture. What can, what it can happen? Suppose uh, for food we are totally depending on this uh, plants. How does our agriculture? Then what this uh, climate change uh, can impact the agriculture and what are the different ways it will be impacted? If you see uh, shift in the climatic and agricultural zones, it is the Because if you imagine our globe with uh, tropical, temperate, subtropical, semi-arid, different uh, uh, climatic uh, conditions, uh, we are aware. Here, what happens is when the temperature is rising, when any organism which is unable to grow in very cold conditions, like uh, temperate regions, now because of the rise in temperature their spread is naturally expected in those areas also as uh, the uh, comfortable zone is uh, going even inside the earlier cooler areas that is how we have to understand in in case of tropical areas as already the uh, existing temperatures are high if further temperature increases there these either plant species or animal species they may face very uh, tight position and they may uh, even some 
they may extend from this uh, inverse because of the higher temperatures. This particular one is seen in case of several insects uh, are uh, getting eradicated from this uh, uh, inverse because of uh, some of these climatic uh, factors. Then impact on the agricultural soil also, it, uh, it, it will impact. Then effect on soil, organic matter and fertility because organic matter, uh, uh, finally how it comes, it uh, comes because of so many microbes and because of the impact on uh, microbes or the organic matter is coming from the plant material only because of changes in the climate change because, uh, and uh, yeah, different interactions with microbes also this, uh, these factors will be changing and uh, in turn it will be affecting the biological health of the soil. Soil erosion and sediment transport particularly when heavy rains happens uh, in hilly regi regions or where uh, slope is more and, and uh, reduces so uh, soil what, uh, uh, water availability. This is the directly we are seeing in many places. We are exploiting them. It is how to relate that one uh, to the climate change. Uh, it goes with the individual uh, the imagination. Uh, ultimately, we are losing the soil water availability. Change in crop water requirement also happens when temperature is more. Naturally, the evapotranspiration will be more, requirement of uh, water will be more and pest diseases and weeds. Actually, here though we are using uh, pests as a separate word. Uh, agricultural uh, pests includes uh, everything. It may be insect, it may be a disease. Uh, in the disease also, it can be because of bacteria, it may be virus, it, uh, it may be fungus and weeds. All these are pests. These pests also will be affected. And impact on plant growth, impact on crop production, affect the quality of the agriculture products uh, as a whole. These are all the climate change impacts uh, in agriculture in broader term. Suppose when you take pests uh, uh, into consideration, these pests are uh, depending on the, uh, suppose in a simple terms, uh, these insects, take for example insects. Insects are depending on uh, plants for their food. There are several insects which are depending uh, are dis uh, disease causing organisms which are depending on the uh, these pests. That is why in uh, we, we can uh, uh, understand this as a tritrophic interactions. Tritrophic means at uh, three different food levels. For example, first level is the plant. Second level is the pest which is feeding on the plant. Third level is some natural enemies which are feeding on these uh, insects or pests. And not, this climate change not only impacts the, directly these plants, it will impact uh, the, even the tritrophic interactions. The, all the three levels will be interacting, uh, they will be uh, impacted uh, and they will make this uh, imbalance. How it will be doing, uh, we'll see one or two examples. Then uh, here, what happens to uh, the, can we make any straight away one single statement that it is going to be positive or negative? That is not possible. There are, uh, it all depends on the, even in insects, in our studies also, the impact is uh, species or the type of the insect decides whether it is good or bad for, uh, for its uh, multiplication. Suppose in, in, if you take, for example, in case of insects, uh, there are few insects, larger insects, what you see as a caterpillars, uh, they devour the plant parts. There are other insects which will take the, uh, suck the plant sap, just like mosquitoes takes our blood. There are small insects, so I will call them as the uh, sap sucking insects, like small white flies or thrips. They will be taking the directly this uh, plant sap as a food. These two type of uh, insects, their reaction is different uh, uh, when we are growing them under elevated CO2 are elevated uh, uh, temperature. Uh, the, that's how they, they will be going. Their influence is uh, decided by the individual uh, uh, species of insect. Similarly, the stratigraphic interactions also changes with uh, uh, different species. Then here, this particular side, uh, the, the purpose of showing this temperature, uh, this slide is temperature and insects. Uh, why it is uh, we uh, uh, already uh, explained this previously, temperature decides the uh, development. In your uh, zoology classes, you might have uh, read that there are thresholds of temperatures, optimum threshold, optimum threshold, 
and upper threshold lower threshold lower thresholds means below which there won't be any development upper threshold means above the temperature there won't be any development and from this uh, optimum range whatever that uh, maximum and minimum temperatures are there uh, one, that only will contribute for this uh, development of this insects for example uh, degree days degree days uh, day degrees it is the t max plus t minimum divided by 2 this is for take for example in bangalore uh, two days maximum temperature is 30 and minimum temperature is uh, 20 uh, uh, 20 uh, that means t minimum 20 plus 30 by uh, 2 uh, 25 minus t minimum here what here what is uh, t minimum is this is a minimum temperature below which uh, development won't happen for that particular species here when you uh, that means suppose that insects cannot develop uh, below 10 degrees means what we got is 25 minus 10 degrees 15 degrees is the accumulated temperature for today like this tomorrow also to be when uh, t maximum t minimum changes like this when that particular uh, thermal uh, degrees are attained then only that particular insect completes its development this is the thermal degree days concept as the temperature increases the development rate will be faster this is uh, this particular graph shows that one temperature and insect development developmental time in uh, uh, days will come down uh, as the temperature increases and the developmental rate uh, increases as the temperature uh, increases because it is measured developmental rate is measured by 1 divided by number of days taken for the development of insects this is the relation uh, we have to keep in mind uh, even for climate change research this uh, same theory will uh, uh, apply and what are the different as the temperature increases in uh, uh, climate change what is going to happen to the insects that is how we have to study then coming to the climate change effects on the crop if you see individually uh, it can be Uh, studied in uh, either it can be a direct effect or indirect effect it is for the crop even for the insect also if you take there are uh, direct factors and uh, the indirect factors direct factors means which will directly influence the biology of that particular crop or insect uh, take for example uh, temperatures what are indirect or uh, direct effects it will impact the physiology morphology and phenology of the crop what are the indirect effects it uh, it will impact the soil fertility which in turn influences the growth of the crop and uh, indirect effects is again pests floods droughts sea level they there will be indirect effects of this climate change on the crop why this agriculture is vulnerable to climate change if you see it is uh, highly diverse in nature uh, mainly it is uh, highly rainfall dependent rapid degradation of soil leads to the loss of soil fertility poor resources base for the farmers and poor technology adaptations uh, in uh, some segments of society uh, the, that's why the agriculture is highly vulnerable uh, to this uh, climate change these are some of the factors uh, same thing if you uh, if you take them into what are the different uh, impacts directly if you see for our reference we will see what are the major impacts in agriculture yields are impacted one uh, reduced precipitation restricts our water availability we have seen heat stress uh, in temperate areas some crops productivity may increase uh, here i want to stress uh, in somebody may be having a question whether climate change is uh, only a negative impact is there any positive impact means this is one uh, uh, example in temperate areas it will be some positive aspects also we can see but uh, for uh, getting um, some good thing in temperate areas major area should not be subjected to the major vagaries that is what we have to remember drier soils and heat stress reduce productivity increased salinization and de desertification in arid zones happens rain fed agriculture in semi arid zones faces higher crop losses temperature and polar regions benefit from the changes initial benefits in mid latitude countries turn negative with high temperatures climate induced variability in wheat production uh, increases in some parts of the world then 
crop susceptibility what happens to the crop and the uh, climate change if you see uh, you, we can uh, divide them into uh, because of abiotic effects and uh, biotic effects under abiotic effects if you see uh, like uh, uh, temperature and other abiotic factors crop development and yield impacted by temperature changes and precipitation changes because uh, this uh, temperature is very crucial uh, for uh, uh, different crops and uh, different physiological activities and precipitation uh, uh, has a direct role in that uh, aspect also. Then biotic effects means uh, this is because of the changes in the pest presence and the availability of the pollinators also. Here what we have to keep in mind, in case of biotic factors, pest means which is uh, uh, not required by us. But, but pollinators also, here also many of the insects, they are also insects, they are the beneficial insects. In our uh, labs, some of you may be studying on uh, uh, honeybees and pollinators are without pollinators you cannot Im imagine this uh, cr crop production in different uh, uh, different crops either it is particularly in horticultural crops this climate change is also impacting the pollinator service services also particularly take for example in our uh, india only suppose take the example of uh, uh, apple Apple needs pollination and uh, apple grows only in the polar regions. Suppose uh, in the base of the hill, we, we have a, imagine that we have a big mountain. Uh, earlier, we used to have uh, pollinators in the base of the hill only, uh, in, in the lower level of the hill because of the high pollination. As temperature uh, increases, the, what happens? the coexistence of phenology of the crop and uh, pollinators it will be shipped into to the higher elevations uh, this will uh, what it will do is the as the temperature increases which is the requirement uh, uh, for the development of this apple that is uh, affected as well as this uh, uh, synchrony between the pollinator and the crop also changes that is how this uh, pollinator and uh, host plant uh, uh, phenology is uh, affecting the pollination services. This is one example of where climate change is impacting the pollination services. If you take what is uh, going to be the impact on different crops, if you see uh, corner maize, if you uh, take high temperatures affecting pollination, water stress, in soybean, water stress and high temperatures, these are all the studies carried out by different laboratories throughout the world and they have come out with these uh, common conclusions. In which crop, what is the stress is going to have a impact on uh, its production. Wheat and small grains, uh, frost during flowering and water stress is uh, going to be constrained. In case of rice, temperature extremes during pollination uh, is going to be faced and difficulty in water management we may face. In case of cotton, high temperature during uh, bowl fill uh, is going to be the negative and in case of fruit trees chilling requirements are not met high temperature affecting fruit development this is what i was uh, trying to explain uh, in case of uh, uh, cool loving uh, uh, crops like apple coming to the insect pest warm climates what it will do warm climate makes the pest population increases enhanced reproduction uh, and the increase, uh, increase of insecticide resistance uh, is possible. Uh, host pathogen response also changes. And uh, uh, cultural controls, control measures, what we are following now, uh, they may be uh, less reliable in due course. Uh, this is how our insects are responding to the global uh, warming. Uh, what happens till now, whatever we uh, discussed, it is reflected here in this uh, single slide. This climate change is uh, resulting in the change in the phenology. Phenology of the crop, which may in turn uh, impact the pollinators uh, or the pest also. Then changes in the species interaction. Species interaction means it can be between the insect and host plant. Uh, it can be host and uh, a parasitoid and competition. This is where Changes in the species interaction may be at uh, uh, two levels or at uh, all the three levels, tri-traffic interactions. Change in the biodiversity and uh, uh, community composition because uh, changing climate may be advantageous to one species 
and uh, making the another uh, species uh, very difficult to su uh, sustain. That way, change in biodiversity also may change, and it, which may result in the uh, which may also result in the shifts in distribution. Uh, and some of these species may be uh, extinct also. These are all the broader uh, uh, response. Uh, responses faced by this global warming by these insects. Coming to uh, how to understand these changes, we uh, we are working with one uh, uh, climax. It is a bioclimatic software. Uh, wh what it will explain is if some uh, climate change is happening, how these insects are going to react. Uh, some of the statements, so, uh, it is uh, difficult to give these predictions. That is where we need the help of uh, some models. This is one modeling tool where we, we are trying to understand the impact of climate change on uh, insects. That, that is the thing. Here, what we did, this uh, in this slide, if you see, uh, this is a snail, uh, favorite organism of Dr. Jay Shankar. Then uh, this is a fruit fly. And this is a fruit border of a tomato, and this is a leaf miner. Uh, this is a common caterpillar, the Spodoptera. These are mites, these are mealybugs. Again, this is a, a fruit fly. These are the insects. Initially, we, we try to understand how these organisms are going to be affected because of climate change using Climax uh, software. Uh, now, if you see the title, Ease of Climax, a bioclimatic for knowing best distribution, number of generations under climate change. The, it is having several uh, uh, uses, this particular one. We try to use this particular model for understanding uh, the impact of climate change on insects. Uh, this is the, uh, using that uh, uh, climax modeling, Distribution of Spodoptera litera in different climate change scenarios. Uh, here, TTD thermal degree days used is 551. Uh, here, here over the period in India, what an, a number of generations of this particular uh, uh, insect is we, we try to understand. These uh, numbers may not be clear. What it is depicted here is, uh, suppose if it is a green color, number of generations are just maximum two. Uh, this yellow color is uh, seven to ten, red color means ten to twelve. These are the number of generations of this insect possible in one year. This is in the suppose this is the present level. As uh, in 2030, what will be the number of generations in this is the area where the number of uh, uh, generations are expected to increase uh, and over the year as the temperature uh, uh, rises in different time frames whether this pest is going to increase or decrease that sort of uh, predictions you can uh, make uh, this is the one of the output map using climax uh, this slide shows what are the different parameters we'll be using for studying this. Uh, let us not go uh, into details of this because uh, uh, one thing I want to say, because temperature is the most important thing which will decide uh, its multiplication in any uh, given area. Uh, this is, a, take for example, for this particular insect, uh, 22 to 28 is the optimum uh, temperature. 11.8 degrees Celsius is the temperature below which no development happens. 35 degrees is the temperature above which development stops. This is, this is the crucial part for different insects. Other than this, there are several parameters. Let us not go into that. Uh, but uh, temperature, one uh, thing we should remember its importance. Uh, suppose here, this is the fruit fly present distribution. This is the fruit fly present distribution means whichever is red color. In the borders of the red, there is a dull color, uh, a little dull red and a little brownish and white. White is the place where throughout the world this insect cannot uh, exist. Even if you go uh, and release this particular insect and give food also, it cannot establish. Uh, uh, that, that is the uh, in climax uh, what it uh, gives the idea is 
if you know where that pest is existing now you can predict the places throughout the world where it can uh, uh, sustain its development and it can multiply uh, that is the concept of this uh, climax based on that only all these uh, modelings will happen and uh, these are all the dark red color means uh, they, these are the hot spots where if food is available this pest can be a major problem all this is uh, what dictates uh, the preference of uh, some area for this pest is whether it is suitable marginally suitable or highly suitable is this climax gives one idea uh, of uh, eco climatic index it is the index which is taking into consideration all the positive aspects of that particular uh, uh, place and as well as uh, stress factors also growth promoting factors as well as stress giving factors both will be taken uh, into consideration and it will give one eco climatic index which will decide the uh, preference of uh, uh, or its uh, suitability of that particular location to the target insects uh, this is the ei uh, ei means eco climatic index eco climatic index less means that particular region is not suitable to that insects suppose ei of sub, in uh, jammu kashmir it is green ei is less uh, it, this particular uh, insect cannot uh, sustain there whereas uh, in red color area it it can uh, multiply uh, there it likes that place that is the indication and eco climatic index gives that sort of idea which is a good area for its development which is uh, which is not suitable for its development uh, this is suppose Uh, we imagine that we know where that pest is uh, presently distributed we want to know where uh, what happens to that particular organism when 1 degree celsius rise happens or 2 degree celsius rise happens uh, though it is uh, uh, both are looking same when you expand this graph or the actual values when you study you will know uh, what is the difference generally uh, when 1 degree rise in Uh, temperature happens this particular insects can go towards north uh, to uh, uh, around 150 to 200 uh, uh, kilometers that means the area which is not suitable for that earlier uh, it can become suitable take uh, imagine that in jammu and kashmir that pest was not there it was there only uh, up to himachal pradesh uh, uh, presently over the period that Uh, this particular species can expand even to uh, jammu and kashmir also that is the interpretation that is how we have to do then this is uh, one of the experiment we carried out to know the influence of drought stressed plants on attraction of leaf miner and sap feeders on tomato uh, the uh, here the why we will do this sort of experiments is uh, the uh, some of you may be knowing uh, there is one new pest we have Uh, reported and tomato its uh, name is uh, tuta tuta absoluta this uh, this is the insect which has come to india and we reported first time in 2014 and uh, now whatever you see in the market in tomato with small holes that is because of this particular uh, insect tuta absoluta actually it is a leaf miner but it can uh, make holes on the fruits also here what we tried is the influence of drought stressed plants on attraction of leaf miner and uh, sap feeder feeders uh, here the gravid females of tuta preferred moderately stressed plants whereas white fly preferred uh, plants regularly uh, received uh, uh, irrigation here uh, in the beginning i was telling the response of this climate change uh, uh, impact studies in different insects it is different if you see this particular insect tuta is a chewing insect chewing insects means it is a larva it will eat the uh, tissues of the plant whether it is a leaf or flower or fruit whereas white fly is a sucking insect which uh, uh, takes the plant sap directly just like mosquito takes our blood uh, and the reaction of this uh, climate change impact studies are different from chewing insects to the sucking insects this is how we are trying to understand uh, so that some predictions we, we can make for the futuristic uh, scenarios because drought is going to happen if a uh, drought happens which pest is going to increase which pest is uh, going to reduce that sort of uh, conclusions we can uh, uh, bring 
then uh, here mismatches in species interactions induced by three universal responses to climate change now whatever we discussed it till now uh, if you at a temporal level what happens suppose in a season the uh, the fee, because of the phenology now it is uh, uh, in a season it is shifting from uh, uh, two three months to the next uh, months that is the changing of that uh, phenology mainly the phenology phenology of the crop changes means phenology of the insects also changes whether phenology of the insect and phenology of the uh, this attraction of the insects are pollinators they are coinciding are they colliding with each other that will be temporal shifts in phenology induce uh, temporal mismatches this is the one wa what we can see with the global warming this is uh, how we have to understand how it is going to impact either pest or pollinators uh, crop pest pollinators natural enemies uh, this is the tempo temporal uh, impact uh, that is shifts in phenology then spatial species range shifts in use spatial uh, mismatches also uh, like in uh, it, the change in the altitude he, he, earlier uh, low lying uh, areas also some crops are grown now because of the high temperatures cool loving crops unable to grow we, we have to uh, go to the more uh, altitudes higher areas uh, similarly for insects also uh, uh, and because of that this shift in the species uh, uh, range also happens and another thing is body size also matters here changes in body size in use uh, size mis mismatches body size means body of this uh, predators some insects which is which are feeding on the other small insects and uh, this uh, body size also matters in long run in deciding the interactions these are the three mismatches in species interactions Uh, in terms of temporal spatial and body size body size mainly uh, in uh, in terms of the insects as well as the uh, natural enemies this is the com uh, the responses of insects to climate change uh, can be considered as a com complex responses uh, this uh, you, uh, you you see this is a one of the popular pest and potato colorado potato beetle and uh, we we here it is not a problem we don't have in europe this is the major pest and potato uh, how uh, they can impact different crops uh, uh, this to uh, the, this is a different on moth it is different from this insect uh, this trytrophic interactions play an important role in understanding the impact of climate change on agriculture Uh, as well as uh, pests also here in this slide we will see one or two uh, positive impacts of climate change increase in temperatures often result in longer growing seasons which can benefit farmers and consumers uh, some crops like sugar beet benefit from both increased temperatures and increased carbon dioxide uh, photosynthetic rate and carbon fertilization is increased water use efficiency will increase as a result of closing tomato and uh, decrease in transpiration rate C3 forage and uh, fodder crops yield increases. Uh, you may be aware that uh, generally we have C3 plants and uh, C4 plants also. C4 plants already they are uh, having in advanced uh, advances in terms of photosynthesis, whereas the uh, C3 plants will have some positive impact because of the more CO2 availability, and the C3 plants will have uh, some edge over the C4 plants with the climate change. then uh, now we will see how to deal with the climate change climate change is happening suppose uh, when it is going to happen and it will continue coming 80 years as per our pro uh, projections as the constantly temperature is going to increase how we have to uh, deal with that climate change particularly in agriculture we will see some points uh, some are adaptational strategies uh, some are mitigation strategies what we have to keep in mind Uh, adaptation strategies and uh, uh, mitigation strategies mitigation strategies means any strategy which is aimed at reduction of uh, production of this greenhouse gases that is the mitigation strategy adaptation strategies are suppose uh, how to grow our crop uh, under these uh, existing or climate change situations how to cope out uh, with that one they, they can be classified as 
adaptational strategies we cannot change uh, we cannot do anything other than uh, change our strategy uh, to tackle that particular problem this is the adaptation uh, what are the things possible in agriculture if you see new varieties now climate change gives the heat uh, rising in temperatures we can have the tem uh, varieties we can develop the varieties which can withstand drought conditions and the heat stress uh, uh, conditions also there are several examples particularly in semi arid uh, uh, re regions ikrsat if you uh, if you know the in hyderabad uh, the institute ikrsat uh, semi arid tropics their uh, aim is the uh, to come out with the varieties which are uh, drought and heat resistant where mainly rain fed agriculture is the uh, only option uh, they are coming out with varieties with drought and heat resistance and this is uh, one aspect new farm management practices Uh, and uh, altered agronomic practices like alternate date of planting change in the cropping systems uh, we have seen in the earlier slides how this climate change is uh, going to uh, change the phenology of the crop itself or the uh, incidence of the pest also suppose uh, for example take for example we are taking a crop when it is sown in uh, july it is maximum infested with some ex pest but when it is transplanted uh, 15 days before it is escaping the incidence of that particular pest uh, means it is known, uh, it is uh, the meaning of alternate date of uh, planting uh, change of the planting time change of the cropping systems also uh, based on the suitability of the crops and conservation agriculture means in in, in case of uh, uh conservation agriculture here means conservation of uh, uh, inputs and mainly this water water conservation zero tillage if you more the plowing more the loss of uh, upper soil which is uh, fertile and which is required for cultivation zero tillage reduction in the summer fallow crop diversification uh, forage in uh, rotations these are all the conservation agriculture conservation of uh, not only water conservation of the nutrients and um, uh, forage uh, forages in rotations for uh, to build the soil health uh, integrated farming systems not only this uh, growing of these crops and combining with uh, animal husbandry and uh, uh, fisheries uh, ha agriculture horticulture together integrating these uh, farming systems integrated nutrient management and uh, nutrient management means again to build the soil health soil nutrients Uh, this uh, uh, growing of uh, uh, leguminous crops uh, uh, between uh, uh, this um, millets and uh, crops like uh, rice so that uh, nu nutrition is improved in the soil risk management early warning systems and uh, crop insurances here comes uh, the smart uh, 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 climate change smart villages the new concept is uh, climate smart agriculture there are several terms which are catchy terms there the major focus is risk management suppose uh, if you can predict the occurrence of sudden rains with a coming 2 3 days uh, or some pest is going to come uh, in the coming uh, one week or two weeks either insect problem or disease problem every warning system helps in that respect then come of the mitigation strategies is Understand now. Coming to the mitigation strategies, what I told uh, mitigation is always it should uh, revolve around minimization of release of greenhouse gases. Now, if you see our dependence on those fossil fuels, which results in the Uh, climate change we should uh, minimize the usage of that one all mitigation revolves around minimization of greenhouse gases that is the uh, uh, take home message here if you see reduce emissions of greenhouse gases that is first and more uh, foremost uh, uh, here uh, suppose agriculture also contributes one of the maximum uh, one of the component in the form of methane methane is a, a, a coming out from the ruminant animals uh, because uh, of after digestion fermentation methane is released from all these ruminant animals like uh, cattle sheep uh, 
uh, goat, uh, other things. Even the paddy fields where water is stagnated, uh, uh, this uh, methane emission is more. The nowadays, uh, so many, uh, so many procedures, so many uh, engineering aspects are coming where these emissions uh, can be minimized. Then watershed management, this. Uh, uh, how to make use of better uh, water, organic agriculture, uh, uh, integrated farming systems, improved management of li livestock population, feed and fodder bank, solar power in instead of uh, uh, exploiting the, the fuels, which again results in the uh, climate change, change in land use pattern like horticulture, agroforestry, silviculture, uh, all these are the mitigation strategies which ultimately uh, help in the uh, reduction in the emission of uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, here, it is not the uh, duty of uh, one or uh, uh, two countries or states. It is a global effort is required, starting from an individual to the at national level, which is being guided by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, coming to the uh, conclusions, what we have seen is climate change is a reality. Agriculture is likely to suffer losses in long term due to heat waves, droughts, unusual rainfall, and other weather anomalies. Uh, adaptation strategies can help to minimize negative impacts to some uh, extent, whereas mitigation strategies can help in long run, for which uh, cooperation from uh, diff uh, different agencies which are uh, working in this direction it is required. And uh, it should go uh, into the minds of uh, 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 individuals where else where this mitigation can happen uh, all of us have a small role to play uh, and uh, uh, the importance now it is uh, taken up by different uh, countries some countries uh, they are going for the complete uh, solar energy by for the stopping of this greenhouse uh, gases uh, there is a paris agreement which uh, tells about that which uh, which is the major signatory is, uh, was the us uh, and it, it was taken back when the previous president of U.S. was there. Again, it uh, is going to enter into that um, Paris Sacrament where this uh, uh, playing an important role in this mitigation uh, uh, aspects will be uh, followed. And uh, it is the need of the hour that all the nations work together to make this climate change uh, uh, it may not be totally not possible to stop the climate change. We have to minimize it so that our adaptation strategies as well as the mitigation strategies together when it goes, uh, we'll have our sustained uh, life with uh, minimum uh, impact to the mother nature. Thank you. I thank uh, whatever I could share. It is because of the uh, NICRA project, which is sponsored by ICR. Now, uh, from next month onwards, we are going to, we are entering into the uh, third phase, the next phase of this NICRA and uh, uh, keeping in view the importance of this climate change uh, 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 and agriculture, uh, this particular project is uh, emphasized and it is going to uh, continue from April onwards, uh, for which we are making some a technical program, what is the new year things you can uh, do? Uh, we'll be continuing this project from IHR. Uh, if, uh, uh, with this, I thank the organizers, uh, the Department of Geology, head of the uh, department and uh, college, Dr. Jay Shankar, for giving me this opportunity to share uh, whatever uh, I know regarding this the climate change, its impact on uh, insects and uh, in agriculture in general. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It was a honor having Dr. Sri, the principal scientist from Indian Institute of Horticulture Research, to give insights on how climate change is impacting insect pests and how the scientific community is involved in mitigation methods. So, thank you for your presentation. We have come to learn about the different pests and the effects of climate change. On behalf of National Science Association, all the faculty members, and the management, St. Joseph's College Autonomous. I'm thankful to you for the spare, for sparing your valuable time to be part of this year's Ignition Lecture Series. It was glad to have you on board for the fifth edition of this Ignition Lecture Series. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, Balaji. Uh, thank you, sir, for the presentation.
uh, it has uh, given insights on, as Balaji said, on different aspects of climate change and uh, its impact on insect pests. We'll now move on to the question and answer session. If there are any uh, doubts, uh, clarification, the participants can uh, raise their hand. There is an icon there, the hand symbol. Uh, I will call out the participant. Or you can also type the question in the chat box. Now, whoever wants to ask can unmute and proceed. Uh, Dr. Sridhar uh, is okay, available okay. to answer uh, yeah. your questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Dr. Jayanti. Yeah, please go ahead, madam. Good evening, sir. Yeah, um, I'm Jayanti from uh, Mount Carmel Department of Botany. My okay. question is, I want to know what impact does climate change has on plant? Maybe on nutrients like carbon content or nitrogen content and uh, how is it going to impact the insect pests? Okay, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. This I, I should have covered. It is a very pertinent question. Uh, suppose we do photosynthesis these carbon molecules are made in the plant. Uh, if because of this climate change, uh, what is happening is carbon-nitrogen ratio is altered in the plant. Ca when these plants are grown under elevated carbon dioxide, uh, the carbon content in the plant will be more, and nitrogen content, which is a part of the protein uh, in, in the nutrition, which is required for the uh, food, uh, as a food to the insects, it will be less. That's why, uh, particularly in insects, if you take for its development, uh, for the development of uh, uh, reproductive, uh, reproductive stage and development of egg laying purpose, they need a sufficient quantity of the proteins also. For that purpose, the insects want, they will tend to eat more to compensate the lowering proportion of nitrogen in the food. It will eat more, more and more. Uh, that is how the length of the cycle, uh, the insect, suppose uh, at normal uh, CO2, take for example 400 ppm, insect is uh, growing at seven days. When uh, under elevated uh, CO2 conditions like 550 uh, ppm, uh, it goes, it, it, it has to eat more for compensating that lower nitrogen. That's how uh, uh, it has to eat more. This one, one aspect is carbon nitrogen ratio is uh, uh, reduced and uh, impacting even the nutritional quality under digestibility, all those things will be impacted, which in turn influences the development of the insects. The nutrition part is uh, impacted very too. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yeah. Sir, there's one more question in the chat box. Yeah. It's about what's the impact of climate change on pest emergence in India? Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is a uh, whether uh, this is a, a tricky answer. Answer uh, there won't be. Will be. We are also discussing that whether climate change. What is the role of climate change on uh, pest emergence? In this, in case of the insects, take for example sucking insects. Sucking insects generally they uh, like uh, higher temperatures. In the climate change scenario, when the temperature is rising the problem of sucking pest is going to increase. Take, for example, mealybugs, mealybugs, white flies, thrips, mites, all these are sucking pests and they, they like the higher temperatures. Uh, because of this programming, the minor pests, which are uh, being under check with natural enemies, because of the rising temperatures and uh, rising uh, uh, conditions, their problem is going to increase, particularly uh, this uh, sucking insects. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, there is one more question. Yeah. Uh, the question is, um, was the locust attack in our country in the previous year a consequence of climate change? Yeah, right, right. Yes. Uh, regarding this, there was uh, uh, generally locusts are uh, coming from that uh, Africa via uh, Middle East. They are reaching to uh, towards from northwest side. They are entering into our country. Uh, actually, it is the, it can be clearly linked to the climate change. 
how they will be coming these locusts they never come regularly every year the one time whenever there is a drought unusual drought uh, <laughs> and followed by the rainfall it uh, encourages the egg-laying by this uh, locust and when they are uh, coming in a lot of uh, uh, it will go into different countries also that's how they will come uh, last year what has come it is because of uh, one of the climate change only it is not in our uh, country it where they are coming from uh, african countries it came and it is uh, attributed to the climate change only climate change in terms of Uh, unusual rainfall and uh, drought conditions followed by heavy rains it has come yes sir uh, any other questions from the participants you can raise your hand or type it in the chat box meantime i want to ask uh, shridhar sir to share his views on the tuta absoluta uh, that was one big story that came in or uh, the invasion of that pest would you like yeah, to yes. share some views on it sir okay sure sure this is now i am working and at first i reported this in 2014 uh, it is actually 100 years back it was named um, one person it was named uh, what, this particular pest is generally if you see what is an invasive pest if you see uh, in 90s uh, locally what you call it as uh, rangoli hula the uh, leaf miner it was also an introduced pest Uh, it came in 1990s through chrysanthemum collecting uh, from uh, us uh, uh, us similarly this particular insect actually it is native of south america from south america it went to the european country from europe it entered into uh, africa from africa it has uh, landed here actually which route it has come i don't know but it uh, came in 6 7 years back the what we have, we are seeing in markets all of you uh, please see if you are not aware, uh, aware of the symptom next time when you see this is the season where it's multiplied this tuta absoluta the earlier leaf miner the major difference is leaf miner the earlier uh, uh, leaf miner is uh, uh, that is uh, rangoli hula lirio mysa trifoli it's a scientific name that leaf miner you can see the leaf means only on the upper surface of the leaf if you turn the leaf you cannot see those symptoms whereas this tuta absoluta which is uh, commonly known as south american tomato moth or south american tomato leaf miner here it will be sitting between upper epidermis and lower epidermis of the leaf and it will completely devour all the tissues of the leaf that's how if a farmer if he uh, incidence is there if he has not attended anything for one week uh, he the field within a week this uh, complete uh, uh, crop will be lost uh, if you see this year uh, we are getting a lot of calls in hosur kolar uh, those regions if farmers are harvesting 100 crates in that in that 50 to 60 crates are getting uh, 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 this produce with the holes by small uh, insect Uh, if here the holes of holes made by tuta absoluta and tomato absoluta are very small uh, the, uh, it is unlike earlier there was one tomato borer uh, which is to be having 3 to 4 mm size holes uh, this particular insect it will make very small holes and another uh, danger about this insect is it not only uh, feeds on uh, uh, leaves flowers all other parts of the plant Uh, it will uh, make uh, it is also a fruit borer leaf miner come fruit borer uh, that, that's why it is a major from ihr we have we developed one uh, technology light trap based integrated management of uh, this tuta absoluta and tomato uh, that is what we are now we are popularizing to different uh, 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 farmers and different states also we are going to uh, demonstrate that one Uh, in our village or in our uh, uh, relatives or friends, if somebody is having this sort of uh, problem, whoever is growing tomato uh, here nearby, particularly in all southern states, it is uh, now it is a problem. Uh, we can advise them how to manage that effectively. Uh, we we can um, uh, uh, give complete uh, so, uh, solution. But only major uh, thing what we have to remember about food absolute is. we have to manage from the beginning of the crop uh, crop stage from the uh, transplanting stage itself 
if, if you are uh, when the incidence is uh, already more it is a, a tough insects to tackle uh, from the beginning we have made one uh, uh, integrated approach for its management it is working out well uh, recently in uh, uh, december uh, we choose one acre plot uh, uh, in north bangalore only there we could uh, uh, where this particular ipm is followed the may we could manage the incidence of this one less than 5% where this is not followed it caused up to um, uh, 50 to 60% damage of the tomato crop uh, the, uh, but you can manage it that's what uh, uh, ihs contribution now it is an invasive pest uh, we have reported and uh, come out with its uh, management uh, uh, protocol also thank you thank you sir I okay. think uh, that's all with the questions from the chat box. Yeah. It was all well. uh, you took us back uh, to our IHR days. Yeah, Three yeah, of yeah. us are here in uh, Saint Joseph's College. Myself, uh, yes. Dr. Viola, who did the prelude. Both of us were in Nikra. Uh, Dr. Viola worked on uh, mango with uh, Dr. Abraham Burgess, and I was with you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And then yeah, yeah. Uh, you were mentioning about the abiotic stress. Uh, yeah. With the doctor, but the, uh, Dr. Martin Paul, who is in botany department, is also here. So all three of us have memories back to HR. Thank right, you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now this our facilities yeah. are getting ready for climate change. Okay. Uh, for Nikra, uh, maybe you can uh, uh, so new facilities. First, particularly this coming phase, their emphasis is uh, already existing facilities. They have to be effectively utilized. And uh, they, they should be shared with uh, uh, different uh, uh, people who are working on climate change, come out with uh, good publications in that uh, uh, respect it is going on. Uh, I appreciate uh, your uh, division and uh, encouraging. I know you, <laughs> uh, what I remember is you introduced me to through the Bangalore uh, Science Forum something in the beginning. That was the first time I, I gave one lecture in, outside. Since then, several lectures we could give. and. Uh, uh, at the end, uh, I would like to thank all the group uh, from starting from you and your division, Vaila, everybody, uh, for giving me a chance to share my thoughts in this regard. You are welcome to visit IHR anytime. Hmm? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Over to Maria for the final vote of thanks. A very good evening to you all. I firstly thank Almighty God for this week. I thank our speaker, Dr. Shridhar for taking time to be with us this evening and giving us such an insightful talk. Thank you, sir. I thank all the teachers present, uh, especially teachers from the Department of Zoology and uh, all teachers. Thank you, dear teachers. A special mention to our MSA coordinator, Dr. Dr. Jay Shankar, sir. Thank you, dear sir, for giving us an exposure each new month to various topics. Um, once again, thank you, sir. I also thank the organizing committee for having coordinated and organized this entire session. Last but not the least, I, without, I thank the participants without whom this would be incomplete. Um, thank you for taking time and being with us. I once again thank each one of you all present. Thank you all. The attendance link is uh, posted. All of you can uh, fill in. And based on that, uh, you will get the certificate link. So we request you to do that by 8.30. The president had posted 8.45. I'm cutting short that. Uh, Sridhar, sir, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Um, bye. bye, sir. Bye. Yeah.